What's up, everyone? Uh, thank you for uh, tuning back in to another episode of whatever this show is called. <laughs> There's no name. It's just me uh, going over some market information. So my name is Tony, and welcome back. And we're going to start off with uh, the coronavirus update. That's uh, obviously one of the main uh, issues in the market and the world today. And we can see that... Uh, it's gone up a little bit. Um, you can see that it's it's kind of it's still going up on a daily, but it's uh, it's kind of leveling off. It looks like I hope uh, that's still a lot of people to be get to uh, to get infected though. But we can see that it's it looks like it's starting to taper off, and I hope that's the case. But um, but that may be short lived because now it's spreading in the U.S. and a lot of other places. So. Hopefully it, it gets controlled and it's not as bad as a, as people think. Hopefully it's only as bad as a, a severe flu or something like that. Um, it looks like most of the people that are affected that are dying. It looks like they're elderly and they've had some underlying health problems. So uh, my condolences to them and their family. Uh, but um, hopefully that means that people that have a little bit more of a a little bit of a healthier immune system, I guess you can say, or a stronger immune system, then you should be okay. There was this article that I read on the Zero Hedge that, uh, let me see if I could find it, uh, it was about smoking and Chinese and let's see uh, what uh, coronavirus brings on Zero Hedge. Um, it was, yeah, I hope this pops up pretty quickly. Yeah, this is not the one I was looking for. So let's type in coronavirus. The gist of the one that I was looking at was, uh, I think it was from early February. It was, uh, I believe it was smoking. That, uh, let me type in, hello, smoking. Let's see if this is which. Yeah. Okay. So sorry for that. Uh, but long story short here is that it looks like a surprising amount of people. So most of the deaths are people are over 60 and that seems to be the case worldwide. Um, yeah, globally that looks to be the case. Um, but aside from that, one of the reasons that the Chinese, um, one study, let me see here, one study found. Let's see here. The Chinese smoke a lot. <laughs> uh, I was pretty surprised by these stats. Um, apparently, uh, Chinese men are responsible for 51% of smoking. I think that was a stat. Let me put 51. Yeah. So it's oh, further down this page. So China accounted for 51.4% of the world's male smokers in 2015. That's crazy. That's crazy. And they even said that it was surprising that even the male doctors are it's shockingly high how much they they smoke uh, so they're saying that smoking might be linked to uh to this um if that's the case then if you do smoke try not to um i know that's easier said than done but just a little bit of a uh, advice there um but yeah so i'll see if i link i'll put a i'll keep this open to to put a link on the page Hello. Um, all right, let's go to Market Watch. So the Dow soars more than 1,100 points. Um, so yeah, we, we're now in a brief pullback, um, but very brief. I mean, overall, we're up. I mean, you can see up here, um, up here on the top left, you can see that the Dow is up 11, uh, yeah, 1,100 points. S&P was up 126 points. So uh, long story short, 4% pretty much all around. Uh, on average from the Dow and NASDAQ and S&P 500. So that's pretty freaking good, right? Um, but we'll see. There's a lot of ups and downs and lefts and right with this market. So why this happened, um, it looks like basically it was the it was a combination of the Fed rate cuts, which I don't know because yesterday it kind of tanked after, uh, well, not tanked, but, you know, it pulled back after, after it was announced. And then um, I think the real key here is the Biden campaign. So with the surprise win and a lot of 
uh, candidates dropping off, excuse me, and uh, supporting Biden. Um, it looks like it's basically Biden and Bernie. And if you are bullish on the markets and whatnot, then it appears that uh, Biden would be your guy. So, so yeah, so if Biden wins, it looks like, um, you know, it would be positive for the market and, and it looks like the market is responding that way. But coronavirus is for reals. So you have to uh, just uh, keep that in mind, keep that in the back of your head and realize that these could be just short-term uh, momentum swings one way or another. I mean, you can see how just by Biden, you know, being the front runner at this point, you can see what the market did. Um, but tomorrow, Bernie could be ahead in two more states, and then boom, there goes uh, there goes that. So, you know, just keep that in mind. And as usual, I'd like to point out Finviz. We got a nice little green chart over here on the top, on the right side of the screen. So that is bullish, obviously. Market's up, everybody is up, everybody's happy, all's good, we're all green. And uh, that's basically it for some of the uh, some of the main uh, fundamentals there. Again, I don't want to go too crazy, considering that the overall market is so it's so volatile right now and it's everything is working in tandem for the most part unless you're a biotech company so actually it's funny let's see um again top change uh percentage winners are apop which is select uh biotechnology so most of them are going to be biotech companies because of obviously what's happening so drug manufacturers biotech conglomerates uh oh we got a IT company here, Meet Group, uh, Ocular Bio. Yeah, so you can see that it's mostly Bio, 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 some other uh, names there. But for the most part, the top gainers who are, except for Meet, it was, uh, well, and this one, conglomerates, Biotech, bio, Drugs, Biotech, and Biotech. Should not surprise anyone. But yeah, let's dive into Z markets. So, um, okay, so I still have the chart from yesterday, which is uh, the S&P 500 mini, well, the uh, E-mini futures. Uh, and yeah, you can see that. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit more. So yesterday's price action was volatile. Today it was a little bit, lot, uh, a little bit less volatile. Um, I mean, it keeps testing this, uh, actually it broke past the 38.2 and it actually is sitting close to that 50% level. So if that's the case, it's a little more bullish because if we adjust this target now to this high, which is basically 50%, it should reduce our, yeah. So it went essentially from, give or take where I had it around here, uh, which was at 2000, so at the, at the 100%, it would have been 2,500 and 2,700 at the 61.8. But now, us being basically at the 50%, give or take, uh, we're looking at a target of 61.8 has raised, raised, has gone up a bit and kind of good because now there's a horizontal there that's going to act as support. So additional support on that end. Um, and the 100% is now pretty much flush with the uh, the trend line. So I could see that even if it does break all the way down here, it would be even harder for it to to break down. Um, no guarantees, anything can happen. But uh, but yeah, that looks like uh, like it's it's getting a little bit more on the positive. So the higher this goes, if it goes to 61.8, then it's going to be even of a less of a target. So if it goes to 61.8, it's funny that it lines up exactly with these horizontals. Funny how that works, huh? <laughs> uh, it could be just coincidence. Um, but I think it's more of a, uh, I don't know. I don't know what you want to call it. Some people hate technical analysis. I like it. It gives me a much better perspective on what may happen. So that's all I care about. If I can get a small edge one way or another, that's that's what I like. So if we 
move. So basically, let me redraw this so that way you guys can see what I am doing here. So if I redraw this A, B, C, D, right? So let's go from this swing high to this swing low down here. And then we're going to cut. Let me make that a little thicker so that way you can see it. Oops, go back. Uh, I guess we need to change it to, let's put it, oops, go back to this sucker, let's go, is that easier to see or not? Let me simply put it in green. Yeah, we'll see. I'll make it a little thicker so that way we can uh, see it there. And I'm going to just clone that, I'm going to drag it down here, and you can see that once again, it's uh, it keeps lining up with these Fibonacci uh, extensions. So, yeah, um, kind of hard to say what will will not happen, um, but it's looking like more and more this, you know, these these ABCDs usually tend to to be pretty accurate. So right now, it looks like it's that. 2,592 region, which is pretty much, it's all, it's a little bit past the halfway point between the 61 point and the 78.6 retracement of that swing high, swing low from back here, all the way back in uh, December 2018. So, yeah, I mean, it's a likely possibility. It's still, it's still there. Um, for me, there's a very high chance that that will happen uh, with any kind of crappy news. Uh, but before that happens, we have to see these targets happen. If that's going to, if that's going to be the case, if it's any bearish news, if there's any positive news and we can just blow past this and go higher and higher and maybe even make all time highs. If again, this is all depending on news. If, um, if coronavirus turns out not to be so bad, if it's just a severe flu, if it's, uh, if there's suddenly some, uh, a vaccine, which, uh, yesterday in the news, it was kind of funny because Trump said it was going to take, it could be as soon as three to four months, most likely less than a year, and then pretty much on the spot, uh, I forgot his name, I wish I knew, um, but I believe he's, I don't know, part of the the, the health department something. Um, I completely got that wrong, I guarantee you, so I apologize. Uh, but he was basically saying that, he goes, it's going to take a, a true vaccine will take about a year, year and a half to deploy. So yeah, so vaccines, I don't think are going to be anytime soon, but um, Fed interest cuts, interest rate cuts, uh, uh, coronavirus updates. If there's uh if it starts, um, you know, if, if countries start, if it's, if it stops spreading as much, all that stuff is good news. Any good news is going to basically have the S&P rally. Any crappy news is going to have it tank. And right now, it's at a very volatile section. And right now, it's kind of like, cons well, I don't know if you could say consolidating between these levels because kind of massive moves, right? Uh, well, let's see how massive they are percentage-wise. So we're between this horizontal and the 50% level. So it's basically 10%. Uh, you know, that's no joke. Today's action was about 5% and we saw, I mean, well, 4%, 4% we saw earlier, uh, which, yeah, you can kind of see there. And, yeah, uh, let me take this off. This was a target, which thankfully was hit. And let me see here. And that's basically it. So right now, to me, it's just, it, we're at a very interesting point there's it's hard to say which way we're going to go i'm leaning towards uh likely downside only because it'll be kind of hard uh, like we we've, we've had probably some of the best news that there's going to be right um we've had uh you know biden is leading in the in the presidential democratic race it seems uh so that's you know better than bernie allegedly for the markets and then um, the interest rates were cut. So all that should be very good news, very good news for a rally, yet we haven't broken past this 50% level that we're, we're at here. So we're kind of dancing between that 
these these horizontals and that 50% level. So if that's with pretty good news and we haven't broken past that, to me what that means is that any kind of faint crappy news is going to have us tumble down. That's just the way I see it. So my first target on the downside would be about 2800 which is basically this extension along with this horizontal. So 2800, 2790, give or take. Um, and if it breaks below that, if everything stands as is, it'll complete this ABCD projection, which lines up with the 100%, which would be about 2592. So you could say 2592 or, let's see here, uh, 2600. So a little bit of a, a target there that you can kind of play with. So between 2800 and 2600, that's kind of a 2800 being the first stop, obviously. 2600, 2590 would be the completion of this ABCD. And from there, it could break below that and test this trend line. And I would be very surprised if it breaks below that. I mean, for us to go below this, that would be pretty bad news, I think, because. Let me zoom out here. Let me go back to auto. And you can see that this trend line has been support that has was briefly broken back here in 2016, uh, but has been pretty much tried and true uh, since 2011. And that break was not a close, if we zoom in closer. That was just a test. That was just a wick down on a daily. So, yeah, I mean... It's just one of those things where it's it's not a, to me, it's not a, a major a thing to, to just break on the daily just below that. Um, but if we do close below that now, then that's that'll be pretty stressful. Um, but let's cross fingers, hope for the best. Um, and that is basically it. So let's look at, um, I've been looking at the, at the FANG stocks, the... Uh, what's it called? The Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google. But let's look at Tesla. See what Tesla's up to. Most likely down. Yeah. So let's see here. Okay. So during the uh, yeah, hadn't seen this for a while. So during the the episode. Oh, you know what? I had it on a log chart. That's what. It, there we go. So we haven't. Yeah, so right now it's just testing. It's dancing between that uh, the 50 EMA and the 20 EMA here. The yellow being the 20, red being the uh, 50 EMA. And today it looks like we're closing just below it. So, you know, basically acting as support the 20 EMA. And uh, so not, you know, not terribly bearish. It's it's pretty solid. Um, so we have to see what happens there. But everything is so correlated with the markets that it's hard to. It's just hard to say one way or another. Um, of course, there's stocks that are going to be, you know, like the biotech stocks are going to be on their own at this point because of what's, you know, coronavirus. Uh, but that's basically it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we test this trend line. Um, if we have some negative news in the next couple of days, you can see it testing this uh, trend line here. And then maybe if it does break below that, then obviously... We're looking at maybe the uh, the 200 as support, purple line being the 200 EMA. And I would be pretty surprised if we broke below this horizontal at 360, but still a long way to go. I mean, that would be a, a massive breakdown, which anything could happen. But from our current price to this trend line, we're looking at a 51% drop. Could happen, but... I don't see it. I don't see it happening anytime soon. I have a feeling that, uh, especially with this election year, it's just election years are always funky. And, but I have a feeling that Trump wants to be reelected. Surprise, surprise. So he's going to do everything he can uh, muster up to, to make this as strong of a year as possible. But we'll, we'll find out. Um, so targets for this, I really, I just, I really don't have any. I'd rather not give any hopes or whatnot. <laughs> Let me see here. Oops. Here. Go to 
There we go. So we tested the 61 point here from that swing high to the swing low. We had a 61, per, well, almost. We actually didn't test that 61 point. So I wouldn't be surprised if we had a little bit of an upside to at least fully touch the 61.8, um, maybe even go above that. Uh, but it got pretty close, so I don't know, it's kind of hard to say. It's hard to say. The uh, If we do an extension to the downside, small tool, let me go to my little trusty. So assuming that we don't have any higher uh, local highs, uh, we're going to be looking at a low that will test the trend line. So at 61.8 being $601. So basically $600 would be a test, which would be support as well here at um, the trend line. So if you're shorting it, your target is 61.8, $600. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are looking at these numbers right now. So we shall, let's see. And yeah, it's, it's hard to say about, because uh, I've been trying to, well, I don't like calling tops or, or bottoms or whatever you want to say. It's For me, it doesn't, uh, like, who cares, right? I mean, as long as, as long as we can make money, it doesn't matter if I'm right or wrong, or you're right or wrong. <laughs> um, point is, try to make money. So, but I, I've been, tr I've been sort of calling a top on tests and a lot of these stocks, just because I've seen that the S&P 500 and a lot of the, I mean, we've been so overextended for so long and we just kept rallying and rallying that um, I'm not surprised that coronavirus, even though some people say that it's not so bad, excuse me, um, that it's it's having the effect it has because, yeah, I mean, some I don't know, some people, it's kind of weird. Some people say that it's not a big deal and people are overreacting. It's just a severe flu. Uh, and, and then you see 3,000 people have died, which is about 3 or 3.5% 3 of the people infected, which is, from my understanding, is pretty bad. But then flu is about 1% or 1.5% of the people infected that get that, uh, that die from the flu. So I don't know. I mean, it looks like it's it's about double that currently at about 3%. I don't know. I don't know what to think. I really I want to I want to hope that we're exaggerating this and it's not some crazy pandemic. Um there was also some news that this uh coronavirus had mutated already. I don't know how often that happens with the regular flu, but I think that's a pretty common thing as well. So I don't know if we're over ex if we're exaggerating this, if we're freaking out, if this if the freak out is uh, due to like if it's a deserved freak out. I don't know, but uh, all I know is that I try to take my zinc and my vitamin C's and try to sleep well at night to at least you know be as healthy as I can, and um, obviously cut down on the alcohol. That uh, alcohol is gonna lower your immune system so anyways let's go to oh we haven't looked at virgin galactic so let's look at that what is it uh spc i believe yeah uh so we have a breakdown of two trend lines we had this uh rather parabolic from when is this from february 10th that broke down a couple days ago, obviously, probably when the market tanked. And yeah, because then we had the gap down. So we had a rally and then we've been, so we broke below this trend, which to me was more valid um, because it extended and it probably extends as far back here. Let me see. Well, not quite, but anyways. Um, so we had support. Um, not really support, but sort of and an actual support here, and then broke below. I mean, gapped below it, and then acted as resistance. Resistance broke above it, but couldn't quite close above it. So, pretty much closed just below the trend line. So, yeah, it's acted as resistance for for a couple of days now. So, that one's not looking so hot. Uh, Tesla's looking a little bit 
a little bit nicer. So yeah, I, do, I see this one probably coming down here and testing the 61.8, uh, 20, basically $20.50 to $20. Uh, I think that was pretty much what I had said in one of the previous videos. Um, and if it breaks below that, then my next stop is 15.72, give or take. Obviously, these are just zones. They're not exact numbers that you have to like follow. Uh, I don't want anybody going crazy telling me, hey, you told me it was 15.72 and it didn't get filled because I put it at 1575. Sorry, dude. Just it is what it is. <laughs> so if we draw one of my fantastic trend extension tools, we can see that the actual 61.8 of this move up here, swing high, swing low, and then retracement, uh, would bring us to basically the fit, the 200 EMA, the purple here. Um, so about 1355. Um, yeah, is it gonna happen? Who knows? The 100 is at 462. Yeah, so you don't want that to happen, right? If you're in this. Uh, I'd say honestly, if, it would probably be down to this 78.6 level. So somewhere between 1450 and 1350 is, is that target. If it breaks anything below that, I mean, if you're in, if you're in if you're still positive in this trade, I would highly consider taking profits. Um, if you haven't taken profits, obviously consult your financial advisor, do all that good stuff, you know, do your own research. Um, but with the market the way it is, you can hold on to this, but it's a there's a big chance that this is going to keep testing lower and lower. Uh, if we look at the RSI, let's look. Um, so we didn't quite break below on the daily, uh, below stochastic, below the, uh, the the twenty. So that's sort of good news, but it doesn't mean much because if it in the next couple of days we have a breakdown, then then you know it is what it is. Um, so 42, 15, yeah, this ABCD would be another bad one because it would be basically, it'll match up with this here. It should at least. So if we do this, I don't know, I just jumped from one idea to the next, so apologies. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you don't want this ABC, ABCD to become a reality if the market goes to crap. Uh, if it does, then this is a very likely scenario, which is not pretty. Um, so what what I was going to before, which I know I'm like, <laughs> I can't multitask, um, is, uh, yeah, and if you do draw an extension there, that would be the 2.618, 1.618 being here. So. Anyway, you spit it up, these are the targets. So it's a very, very likely. So your first target's most likely $16.69 on the downside. Uh, of course, this is just assuming that it's gonna go south, um, which there's a good chance, let's be honest. Um, first target on the downside, $16.69. Then the next likely target would be the 61.8, uh, so about the 1350. Um, there's that $16 range. So between uh, that horizontal there, it, I don't know, It's there's not much history there, but I think it'll jump straight down here to 1350. And then, I mean, nobody wants to see that happen, but if it, if it does break down then 10 and then quickly down a 690 and I mean, doom and gloom is basically 460. Yeah, you don't want that, but you know, that's why taking profits is so it's so important because you can actually just save yourself the headache. If you st still believe in the stock, just because you have the stock or don't have the stock doesn't mean that the stock is it's gonna make any difference whatsoever. You can be bullish on the stock, take your profits, wait for that pullback, and then just buy in, right? I mean, what's I mean, I don't see what the big deal is. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people kind of did that already where they saw the coronavirus news hit and whatnot, and they probably sold somewhere up here between 38.2 and 
um, but it already hit the 61 point in. So a lot of people probably bought back in here. I mean, the smart money is doing that, right? Um, you made some crazy profit. You wait for that pullback, came pretty fast. You got filled in. I mean, this is this, this is such strong support because we're at the 61 point and we have the 50 EMA and we have the horizontal. So that just made so much sense to be able to buy in at that point. And um, I would, if it's hard to say because I don't want to recommend anything, but yeah, long story short, take profits and then wait for the 61.8 pullback, maybe all the way down to 78.6. And then if you don't want to go all in, just layer your buys, you know, put some at 61.8 level, which is at $20.50, and sprinkle it in as it goes down, layer those buys in. Um, if you're holding on for dear life and where can this go? It's hard to say. Most likely it'll, you just have to take it day by day and see how it reacts to all these levels. Now, this is a resistance level. Um, and then we have resistance up here again. But if it's able to close up here, then most likely it's uh, $28.89 all the way up to $42. I mean, that would be a double top at that point. And then who knows what happens. I mean, if it gets... You just got to take it day by day. Um, right now, it's not looking too hot, to be honest with you, um, especially if it breaks below this horizontal here, which would confirm market structure fail. And so anything below the 20, especially the $19.20 level, anything a close below there, I would be personally out. I'm not in the stock at all. I'm not in Tesla either. But just uh, FYI, that's what a lot of smart people are doing. Not because I'm smart, just because I learned from smart people. And yeah, that's basically it. So just be smart. If you have profits, take your profits. If you're looking to buy in, um, these moments like this are the best times to, to buy a stock if you're truly uh, bullish on it. If you're bullish on a stock and you have the funds and you're, you're liquid, you have the capital, and your financial advisor approves that you did your own research, you know, these kind of markets are perfect. This is what you're looking for. This is where money's made because um, the S&P 500 dropping 5 10% or more gives you, it's a sale. It's going to, to a store, going to a mall and seeing that, or going to a, a dealership and seeing that your favorite BMW is now, hey, it's 10% uh, off. It's like, yeah, I got the money. I want this. Let's do it. So, yeah. Um, and... Try to invest in companies and yeah, invest in companies that are strong because they'll they're gonna outlive any kind of temporary paranoia or whatever. So all these emotional outbursts, everybody panicking with coronavirus, people are still gonna be around in a year, two, five, ten, a hundred years from now. So strong, uh, strong companies, companies like uh, traditionally like Coca Cola. Uh, think about companies that Warren Buffett would buy. You know, American Express. Um, I'm not a bank fan, but uh, Bank of America, um, Coca-Cola, you know, all those, just Google Warren Buffett or Berkshire Hathaway stocks, and you'll see, you know, a pretty solid list. So um, companies like that just really, I mean, they're just on sale when something, when some fundamental or some crappy news comes out. And, uh, well, 33 minutes in. So yeah, um, just be smart. Uh, always you can always speculate, and you know you got to do that according to your plan, according to your financial advisor says. I keep saying it because I don't want to get sued by some crazy. Um, yeah, just be smart with your money and play it safe out there. And that's basically it for now. Oh, you know what? One last thing to look at. I haven't seen this. It's always fun to see it the Bitcoin Let's see what Bitcoin's up to on the daily so on the daily yeah it's consolidating here consolidating consolidating uh, here so we had a uh... yeah I'm surprised uh... it's interesting it's interesting because the market did rally today a bit so uh, it doesn't look like Bitcoin did much between that so it's between these horizontals, pretty much. Uh, there's a little bit of a, a 200, really, uh, what's saving it at this moment, technically. 
uh, and this horizontal here. The 200 EMA and this horizontal here at 85, 83. Um, but that's pretty solid. If it's able to, to consolidate here, that's pretty bullish to me. Um, we may be following a bullish daily RSI. If we're able to close the next day or two uh, or three, we might have some... Uh, well, actually, no, because we have, it wouldn't be a divergence, but it would just be bullish -y. Um Not truly bullish until above the 50, preferably 60. So we're still bearish on the daily in uh, on the RSI. Got to take it day by day. And we are turning up on the stochastic from being on a traditionally oversold region. So it could be that we're going to pull all the way back up and see some tests maybe tests up here between 9200 probably 9200 if it does curl all the way up 9200 and if it does break 9200 then most likely somewhere between 95 well 96 and then as high as 10 2 i think it would just jump straight up there i think from honestly from 9200 of course there's always some resistance somewhere in here but i think it'll be if it does break 9200, I think it'll be pretty fast to go back to the uh, the recent all-time highs of 10.5, give or take. So yeah, that is basically it. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. If, uh, if you like the video, make sure you press that like, please, that helps. And subscribe, and that's pretty much it. So have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.